Hello everyone. So this is a quick tutorial on how you can scan your artwork and bring it into Affinity Designer. So here I have the HP Scan app. So I use a HP Scan, HP machine, and that's what I'm actually going to use to scan my artwork. So I have loaded the artwork on the scanner and all I need to do is just hit the scan button. I'm going to leave it as a JPEG. So I'll just hit scan and you might actually hear the machine make a little bit of a whining noise. So while it's doing that, I'll open up Affinity Designer, which is the software I'm going to use to import the scanned image when it's complete so I can edit it. I can uh, do a lot of contrast and adjust that. So the scan is complete and you can actually see it right here. Unfortunately, we can do things like, uh, like rotate. You actually see I'm actually rotating that counterclockwise or clockwise. It doesn't matter, that's good. And you can do a little bit of edits here, but I'll just leave it here. For the file type, you can actually change it. Or you can't actually, because if I hit the drop down, it's leaving at JPEG. I'll just hit save. And right here, it's in my documents folder. So I'll go to my volume D and look for my scans folder. Because I usually put them in that scans folder, it's here. And I'm just going to call that uh, Eve. So I'm going to call it Eve. And that's it. We're done. We have an artwork called Eve, which we have dropped in here. So I'll just hit E. And I'll just double click on this so we can just see that directly on the window system. So this is the artwork. And the resolution isn't really bad. But what I would like to do is just edit this and, you know, kind of like work on this. So I'll close this and I'll head over to Affinity Designer. And what I'll do is just create a new project. So I'll go to File New. And here on the web, oh, let's go to Print. I'll select A4 and I'll leave it on the portrait orientation and hit Create. So now you can see we have a nice little A4 paper which roughly mimics the size of the sketch I made with pencil. So I'm going to go to File and hit Place. And it's going to ask me where I want to get this. So I'm going to go back to my scans folder and I'll just open that and I'll search for Eve. I'll just type E and there it's on Eve and I'll hit open. So now I'll just click here and just drag this to center it. So you can see we actually have that walk kind of centered here. So I'll just adjust this a bit. Now this is totally fine. Let me just make my brightness top and adjust my screen. Now this is super fine, but you can actually see I might want to adjust the contrast a bit to make this dark. So the first thing I'll do is to go to my layers. I have the layers here and I'll hit Control G. What this is going to do is to create a group. Now once you have a group, you can add the adjustments to this group to edit this image. So let's do that. So I'll just drag this over here. And again, if this is looking strange, if the interface is looking a bit different to make sure we are all working at the same interface, I'm going to go to View, Studio, and at the bottom, I'm going to hit Reset Studio. So now the layer is supposed to be on the right side of the screen, and you can actually see your artwork there. So the first thing I'll do is to hit that and go to Levels. Levels is actually a great way to play around with this. So let's try the black level. By just doing this, you can see I'm actually darkening this, and it's actually looking great already. I really, I really like how this is looking. I'm not going to put it like 100% you can see because that's bad. So I'll just bump this up a bit. So initially it was around here. Now if I just move it over here, you can see it's looking really nice and looking a bit dark down there. So for the white level, if I drag this, it's going to make it super bright. I'm going to lose that. So that's not something. So I'll just put, push this slightly to the left just a little bit. So you can see we're it's getting rid of some of that paper detail we have around here. So I'll just drag that a bit just to have some of that back. And for our output black, we can just push it up a bit. So I'm using for the black level 56 and for the white level at 99. Now we can try gamma, which is going to be a blend between these two. So I'll just drag the gamma down a bit to about 0.6. Again, we have this nice little sliders we can use to just adjust this. I'll bring out the navigator and we can just zoom in and look at our work and see that. Now the cool one is, uh, let's go ahead and set this right here. And we can drag this. Now this is the coolest one right here, the output white level. And basically what this does is to give you a nice little neutral 
background right there like it's not supposed you can actually leave this as super white but i'll just drag this here to have a nice little neutral tone to this and you can see how that is actually looking now we have this levels at the top of this group if i turn it off this is our default this is what we have now with our levels default and with the levels so what we can do is to dial that down so we don't have a hundred percent of it so that's one way you can begin to make some adjustments let's go ahead and add some other effects we can do things like uh, hit the brightness and contrast and what I can do is just hit that drag that brightness down a bit you can see just trying to make it nice and lovely and then for the contrast we'll just bump this slightly up a bit so the contrast is also a very nice you know way to do this now my paper was a bit bent and squished and it's not really good to have your bend paper bent and squished like that because it's going to make your uh, your artwork really look kind of weird and make the background and the paper look not really uh, cool so that's one thing i noticed and you know just try as much as you can not to mess with that so again we can actually uh, drag this into the group let's open our group and let's drag this adjustment layer into the group so now it's in the group what i'll do is just pull this up a bit like that okay just leave it out there so we'll turn this off on you can see that and then we can just reduce that opacity like that so it depends on what you want to uh, achieve that's a good way to do this i'll just select these two holding shift and i'll just group them together so you just have everything in one solid group like that there are lots of other adjustments we can do we can even try a gradient map and basically this is going to uh, let's add a nice little warm tone to this section like that and we can change our blend modes we can try darken multiply like that and what we can do is just kill that opacity right there and just drag this down a bit so you can see you give it some nice little saphir tone and now it looks a bit kind of like brown brownish like that and what we can do with the gradient map we can also change the blend mode for the gradient map so you can actually see so they have more of that color showing or specific color showing like that if i go to difference i see it's a nice one and then we can always uh, i, I kind of like subtract and then what we can do is just if we bump it up you can see how it looks if we just dial it down a bit and basically what it's doing is just making the color look kind of like nice and bluish like that and what we can do is to go over here and adjust our colors so for instance we can use the uh we can use a nice little value just add an overall tone to the image right so you can actually see we have some nice little cool looking tones like that so we could just apply that so that range is going to be used by the gradient map so obviously it's much more uh, complicated than that but that's just giving you an idea and it's the same opacity we're actually using right here so you can see you can really use a lot of these effects and play around with uh with your uh, design so we have that let's go ahead and see what other adjustments we can have now we can go to our curves which gives a very very nice uh, way to add some of that variation there and basically we're just adjusting the luminance right here and for the blend mode we can go over here and then set a specific thing here for example if you wanted to work on the luminosity or average this is going to work on your grayscale tones so if i hit on color we're just going to be using that to affect this color you can actually see that looking awesome over here like that so you see so bringing our artwork and remember a hundred percent is really bad so what we can do is just dial that down a bit like so so that's a hundred that's zero that's a hundred we'll just leave that at about twenty percent and that's not really looking bad so what can we do to fix some of that uh, issues here so if i go back to the original artwork i'll just hit ctrl j just to duplicate that and i'll turn this off well we can actually switch to the pixel persona and now that we have that pixel persona selected what we can do is to use the pencil or the uh, paintbrush tool 
and select a color. I'll just make this slightly wide a bit. We can just sample a color and then begin to paint away. I'll just add this over here and close this. I'll just hit close. So you can actually see so, uh, what we have there. We're actually using a black color. I'll just hit the eyedropper tool to sample this bluish color and I'll hit B to uh, go back to the paintbrush tool and it's really a bad idea to paint directly on the art. So what I'll do is to drag the layers up a bit and I'll add a pixel layer above it and I'll lock this layer. So I'll hit the padlock icon. So now I'm on this pixel layer. I can just start, you know, painting away. Now what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to be affected a lot by all these adjustment layers on top of it. So the best thing to do is to let's take, let's take this one we created and put it above everything. So this is going to be our default artwork. This is our default setting. We haven't applied any changes to it. This is default. So what we're going to do is to, let's just zoom in a little bit and I'll use the eyedropper tool, sample this color, go back to the paintbrush tool and I'm just start painting over here. I'll just uh, use I again, sample this with my paintbrush tool and try to paint this. And you can see we're actually destroying this. But what I just wanted to show you is that you can actually uh, paint over your uh, created work just to make it super uh, unique. And what we can actually do is since we have one, I'll turn this back on. I'll use a multiply mode to pass this initial design over here, or we can use darken. And then what we can do is just reduce this opacity like so. I'll just turn this back off and it's on zero. So we'll just blend this back on and you can actually see that effect out there. So let's bring this back on. So I'll just turn this on like that. And now if I drag this down, we're getting a blend of the one on top mixed with the one underneath. So we're not having more of that effect just showing through right there. So our original on top and our blended one below, and we can actually use uh, this one right here. So the best tool to use is to, uh, if you want to really work on these edges and kind of like work on this is best to use affinity photo so i'll just show you what i mean so i can export this right i can export this design and then take it to affinity photo and i'll just begin to work on the background and actually fix this but i like this pencil -y kind of feeling so i'll just go to file and export this so the file export I export it as a png and just hit export and I'll just put it next to the scan. Now it's good to, since this is going to be a project, I'll just create a folder and I'll call that folder Eve. So file new, I'll call that folder uh, Eve. And then within Eve, whoops, that's a wrong folder. Okay, there it is, Eve. I'll call this Eve within the, uh, the PNG export. And then the Affinity Designer project, I'm also going to save it as Eve. So I'll just go to file and save, which is the first thing we're supposed to do. And I'll call that a. So I have the affinity designer file and I have the saved file and I can just use that and play around, do a lot of things. Like it's so much fun. Like when you think about what you can actually do to a picture, for instance, I can group everything. So I'll just select this, drag down to the bottom while holding shift. I see it's not really uh, being responsive right now. I'm just hold. Ah, it's not really helping right now. This group and hold control, click this one. I can group these together, open this and then drag you inside. And now you can see we have one group and if we turn everything, everything else goes. So now that I have that one group, I can just do some fun stuff. So I'll switch to the designer persona and do something like add 
a nice little effect down here. I'll just draw a nice little rectangle, change the color to something. Uh, let's go to the fill. I'll go over to the wheel like that. And I'll just add a nice little blur like that. Just dial it down a bit, make this kind of like greenish, looking nice. Either way, you get the picture. Just something very simple, subtle, like that. And I can use the transparency tool and just drag this. So it looks kind of like nice <laughs> and just the basic design there. So we have something kind of like warm right there. And you can actually see that effect. It's nothing really cool, but it's just subtle and it just helps make this stand out. I can duplicate that and I'll hit the transform tool, rotate this and kind of like drag it towards the top like that and drag that towards the top and I'll just make that a bit warmer. So you actually see we have like a little uh, gradient effect on this and I'll still dial this down a bit just so you can actually see. So it's actually there, but it's not really, uh, it's not really bad. It's not really disturbing. All right. So we can do stuff like that and we can always get away with it. Like just playing around. So, uh, like I said, we can use affinity photo. So if I say, uh, photo and have affinity photo here, we can export this design we have right here into affinity photo and we can use affinity photo to really work on the backgrounds you know to crop and do a lot of things but i'll just leave it like there so this is how you can bring in a nice little sketch play with the levels adjustments and then you can use those adjustments to work and make things better uh, photo has more uh, nice adjustments they're pretty much almost the same I just drag my adjustments here they're pretty much the same and they're much right here but they're all designed to work well with uh images so like it has these tools so uh thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next quick tip